So the tagline at the end of all my videos is learn everything, do what you love, and be kind. Well, today I'm going to take my own advice because in this series, we're going over the objectives for the Linux Essentials course, which if you want to take the exam, great. But if not, it's just a great introduction to Linux. Well, one of the objectives today is show how to use a web browser. I'm not going to show you how to use a web browser because if you have gotten this far in whatever device this is out here that you're watching this video on, I'm pretty sure you know how to use a web browser. So we're not going to cover that section. If you don't know how to use a web browser, feel free to comment below. I can help you out, but I don't think that's why you're here watching this video. Anyway, what I do want to talk about, though, is how you can actually use Linux, like in your job or in the job that you want to get. It's going to be two main ways. Now, first of all, the most common way that you're going to use Linux in your job is in the server room. It's everywhere, even places you don't think. Like if you're doing cloud computing, almost all of the cloud computing services are running on Linux. And even if you can do all of the things in a clicky, clicky, click inside of a web browser, <laughs> which you know how to use now, <laughs> even if you can do that, if something goes wrong, it's important to understand Linux enough to know what happened behind the scenes that went wrong so you can troubleshoot and fix those things. Sometimes we just train people to click buttons in a way uh, and they don't understand what's happening underneath and that's a really scary place to be. That's why having some Linux knowledge and expertise will make you so much more employable and more confident in your job if you already are employed. Anyway, so yeah, Linux is everywhere. Even if you're running Windows virtual machines, like if you have an infrastructure depending on Windows, Ugly cough scene. Whew, okay, even if you're running Windows servers, like on a VM and ESXi, for example, ESXi itself is running Linux on the hardware, and then you build those Windows VMs on top of it. So if something goes wrong with the virtualization infrastructure, you better have some Linux person who can figure out what's going on with the underlying virtualization platform. It's very important to know Linux. However, that's not the only place Linux is, exists. You can actually use Linux on the desktop, which in this whole series, I'm going to be using Linux even to teach server stuff. I'm going to use a GUI front end because the same system is underneath, uh, but the GUI front end makes it a lot easier to use. And there's this standing joke in the Linux community like, oh, this year is going to be the year of Linux on the desktop. What that means is Linux has gotten to the point where it can function on the desktop and we, it'll take over Windows and Mac OS. Here's the deal. Linux on the desktop works fine. It can do almost everything that most people need it to do, but it's not so much better and the others aren't so bad or so expensive that it's going to take over. So it's never going to be the year of Linux on the desktop, but also every year could be the year of Linux on the desktop. You should be able to use Linux on the desktop because it's the same as everything else. The apps are there. It just works. So we're going to look at that. I'm going to show you a couple different things you can do on the desktop and how it is similar. It should all look like at the end of this, you should be like, I didn't really learn anything other than I don't have anything to learn. That's the goal of this video. Now, the most important thing is that you understand how a web browser works. I'm just messing with you. No, I do want to show you, though, this is, uh, like I said, this is Ubuntu Mate. We've used this before. And how it works is you have a, a folder or directory system just like you would on a Windows or Mac OS machine. And this is just a, a file browser. If we go to the root level of our system, or let's see, it's here somewhere. Um, oh, file system right there. So we can look. These are all the folders or directories at the root level, like at the lowest level of the computer. So if you're on Windows, this would be C colon backslash, right? This is all the, the directories and, and folders inside there. Uh, this is where things are found. We'll talk more about this later, but for example, configuration files are generally in the etc. directory, um, as opposed to like the registry in Windows. They're just files in the etc. folder. Um, our home directory, like where all of our files are, or inside home, there's going to be a folder in here for every user. The only user on this system is S Powers. So we'll go in here and you can see all of these are the folders inside my home directory. For example, here is the desktop folder, which, resp or which reflects what's on the desktop. If we create a folder here, boom, untitled folder. And here it is on our desktop. And then if we delete this or move it to the trash, there it's gone. So that's that's how the, the home directory works. That's how the directory system works. Now, the one thing I want to talk about, too, is terminal versus console. When you boot up a Linux machine or a VM and all that text scrolls by, like as it's booting the, the startup 
information, if you will, that is on the console. So on the, you know, what you plug the monitor into or the virtual machines like window into seeing it, that's considered the console. It, it dumps information out like what would be on a monitor on a, on a computer. That's called the console. You can actually type there if, you know, you have your keyboard actually plugged into the computer. Uh, that's the console. But the terminal window is like a, it's actually called a virtual console. And it's, it's not directly connected to the information that is spitting out to the monitor uh, and you can have multiples. So while this is a terminal window, it's like a virtual console. We can say LS and we can see uh, LS is the command to show us the directories and these directories match the same ones that were in here. See desktop, all those are the same. Um, the thing is that you can have more than one of these, right? If we did uh, can, you know, a file new terminal, we have another virtual terminal and whatever we type here doesn't show up over there because these are just like multiple virtual terminals that we can communicate with the system and it doesn't it's not like there's just a one console that's plugged into the monitor. So terminals are really, really vital and you can actually access them remotely over the network. And that's usually what you do is you access a remote terminal on a server. But it's important to know that it's different than the console. The console is the stuff that spews out like on the monitor that would be plugged into the system. Now on Linux systems, if they're just installed standalone, like, you know, it's just like the system that we installed, like the one that we're looking at now, it can be just a locally stored password file. It's encrypted and all that stuff, but the locally stored password file is where the login and password information is stored. So you can change your password and it will change it on the local computer. But Linux computers can also connect to a larger like Active Directory or LDAP or, you know, a big pie in the sky authentication system so that if you change your password on the server, that's how you authenticate to get into the Linux machine. Now ours is just local. So any password that we change is gonna be local to the machine that we change it on. And it's not going to change it for everywhere else that we might log in. But it's important to know that Linux often is connected to a bigger directory of authentication. So we're, I'll show you how to change your password real quick. It's pretty simple, it's pretty easy to learn. And there's gonna be multiple ways. Now, if this didn't have a GUI, we would have to do it this way. We would just type P-A-S-S-W-D and it would say, okay, what's your current password? And you would type in your current password and as long as you do it right, it would say, okay, what do you want for a new password? I actually typed in the wrong password, but that's how you would do it on here. It would just walk you through it. You'd have to type your old password, type your new password twice, and boom, your password would be changed. Since we're using a GUI, we could also go in, and this is going to be different on every uh, distribution, like what you would actually uh, go to to do this. And I'm not even sure. Here we go. Yeah, in, in Ubuntu Mate, if you go to preferences, oop, yeah, and about me, uh, we can see, hey, Sean Powers, that's me. If you want to change your password, there's a nice little button. And it's exactly the same as on the command line. We can say current password, type in the current password, click authenticate, and then we put the new password in twice. Like here, I'll do that. Oh, now you know my password is all dots. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Uh, okay, so I'm authenticated. Now I can change it to a new password. Now if I do this and I type it I, and they're not the same, it's going to say, oh, the two passwords aren't equal, and it's not going to let me change it. So there are some safeguards to make sure you don't accidentally lock yourself out of the system. Right? I didn't change my password, but that's the process to go about doing it. It's also really important to realize that while Linux is touted as this secure operating system, in many ways it is. It's it's designed well, and you know it's it's been uh, more secure than other operating systems in the past. But just using Linux alone does not guarantee security. It does not guarantee privacy. There are some Linux distributions designed specifically to uh, protect your privacy. Things like Pure OS or cubes is another one that that they really work hard to make sure that your data is protected and not leaked out and that sort of a thing uh, so i don't want you to have this false sense of security using linux uh, that alone is not enough you still need to be smart when you're computing especially because a lot of the the programs that we use on linux are the exact same programs that we're going to use on windows or mac os things like chrome and firefox and things like that and browsers this really ended up being a lot about browsers but i promised when we started this video that i would show you that you can actually use linux to do things so let's go in and start uh LibreOffice impress which is kind of like a uh, powerpoint like microsoft's powerpoint and I'll be honest, years ago, it was really clunky and it was kind of not all that great. Like, oh, sure, it seems nice, but it's not really that nice. I got to be honest, it's actually a really nice and powerful um, way to make a presentation. So like, uh, let's see, I changed the name of this channel to the Community 
college. And so we're going to do a presentation on that. We can do something like, oh, let's insert um, something from the gallery. Uh, let's do this cool arrow thing here and make it wider and I don't know what I'm doing, but anyway, these are like really nice graphics, right? We can do really awesome things with this. And then we can actually show people our slideshow full screen. There we go. And I gotta be honest, it is really just as nice as PowerPoint for doing quick presentations and that sort of a thing. Like I said, Linux on the desktop, it, it's not that it's not the year for Linux on the desktop because the, it's not ready. It's totally ready. It's a very viable way to compute and, and do day-to-day -day tasks. It's just that the motivation to switch has to be there. If you really dislike Windows and Mac OS, switching to Linux, very viable. It's a great way to go. It's free. It works. It's reliable. It's awesome. Uh, but if you don't have the motivation, you might not want to switch. Anyway, that's how you can use Linux. It's really powerful and it's nothing to be afraid of. Even if you're stuck just on the command line and you don't have the GUI, it's not a scary place to be. And as we learn more and more, you're going to be more and more comfortable with it. And you'll be able to solve a lot of those problems that are going to get you a better job. So remember, like I started with the tagline, I'll finish with it. Learn everything, including Linux. <laughs> Do what you love and be kind. I'll see you at the next video.